Hi, this is part two of optimal power flow lecture. In part two, we will be seeing what OPF is. We will learn basics of constraint optimization. We will see what, how OPF is also an op constraint optimization problem. And we'll see different solutions that are available to solve such constraint optimization problems. Additionally, we'll also see some examples of solving OPF using Power World as and Matt Power. As you have seen in the last lecture, optimal power flow is a combination of power flow and economic dissipation. The drawback of power flow is that it does not include any kind of costs. So Gener generator costs are not included in power flow. The drawback of economic dispatch is that it does not include line limits. Optimal power flow, on the other hand, optimizes generation while enforcing transmission line limits. So basically, it is a combination of economic dispatch and power flow analysis. One of the important note in OPF is that in the absence of lines or transformers loaded to the limits, or in other words, when line flows or transformer flows are within the limits, the solution for the OPF is exactly the same as the solution to the economic dispatch problem. It's only when lines are overloaded that we need to fire out the more expensive generators to satisfy our demands. Otherwise, OPF and ED are have the same solutions. So the general structure of optimal power flow, as we said, is a combination of economic dispatch and power flow. It's given by the objective function is very similar to the economic dispatch, which involves minimizing the total operating cost, which in our case includes the cost of fuel. We have some inequality constraints and we have some equality constraints. For the inequality constraints, we consider generator limits. So the minimum and the maximum production capacity. We also consider the line limits, which forms one of the most important part of OPF. So this constraint ensures that power cannot flow above the specified limits. For the equality constraints, we consider power flow at, for the entire network. So this means that we consider generation minus load at each bus equals the net power flow at bus. So this is a basic structure of optimal power flow. To visualize this, I have put a picture which says the basic aim of OPF is to minimize the cost of generation which is objective function. We have different inequality constants, which include respecting the line limits, respecting the generation limits, and we also have the equality constants, which means we have to respect the power balance equations at each and every bus. So now we will take apart each and every component of this optimization problem. First, we see the objective function. So the main objective is to minimize the total generating cost. So let's say we have three generators, P1, P2, and P3. Each of them have a cost of C1, C2, and C3. To minimize the total generating cost, we can write the expression as C1 times P1 plus C2 times P2 plus C3 times P3, which gives us the total cost. Minimizing this cost is our main objective. Now, this is a simple case where I have assumed that the costs are linear. It might also happen that we have nonlinear costs 
but we are not considering nonlinear equations as of now. Next, we see we have to balance power at each node, or basically we have to solve the power flow equation. So at each node k, we have the power generated and we have the power demand or the load. So this constraint tells us that generation minus load equals the amount of power flowing into that bus. In this case, it is active power. We also have the similar expression in case of reactive power, which says the generated reactive power at bus k minus the load, the reactive load at bus k equals the reactive power flow at bus k. So this is an equality constant. We also have multiple inequality constants. The first are the upper and lower limits on active and reactive power outputs of generators, voltages. So in this case, we have U is the upper, the lower limit of active power, and similarly we also have the lower upper lim lower limit for reactive power. U dash is the upper limit for active, and similarly for the reactive power. So for each generator bus, we have to maintain our production within these two upper and lower limits. Additionally, we have to see that the power flow is less than so this is a power flow at each bus is less than the limit specified for that transmission the power flow at each transmission line sorry is less than the limit of that line additionally we have to we also have to ensure that the voltage at each node is within certain tolerance mostly this tolerance is between 0 0.9 and 1.10 in per unit. So we have to maintain all these inequality constraints such that our system is stable. When we have a new dispatch, our system does not or should not show any kind of instability. To summarize the optimization problem for OPF, we will see how we can model this as a constraint optimization problem. So first, we need the decision variables. So in our case, the decision variables are the active power output for each generating unit. So in this case, we are not considering reactive power to keep our case easy and simple. So these are the decision variables for our optimization problem. The state variables include the voltage magnitude at each bus and the angle of voltage, a voltage angle at each bus. Other than that, we also require the network topology, which tells you what lines are connected to what buses. We also require the network parameters, resistance, reactance, conductance, flow, voltage limits, we also require the generator cost functions and we have the generator limits. So with all these models, we, with all these parameters, we can now write the entire optimization problem. The optimization problem for OPF is written as minimizing the cost of generation. So this minimizes total cost. This optimization problem is subject to the power flow equality constraints, the generator capacity constraints, the line limit constraints, and the voltage constraints. This is a combination of all the constraints and the objective function that you have seen in the previous slides. In general, we will be 
assigning the cost function, which is the summation over all generators as fu, which will be our objective function for decision variables u. And we will be assigning the set of all equality constants as g, which is a function of x, y, and u. And we'll consider the inequality constraints as h, which will also be a function of x, y, and u. In general, we consider all the set of all constraints, g and h, to be denoted as phi. So our objective function will be denoted as f. Our constraints will be denoted as phi. So with this basic structure in mind, we can now see what kind of solutions we can have for the OPF. So OPF in general is a form of constraint optimization problem. Now to solve this kind of constraint optimization problem, we can use Lagrange multiplier. So in the next couple of slides, we'll go into details of what Lagrange multipliers are, but the general process of solving such problems is using calculus involving Lagrange multipliers. So what we do is we take the objective function f and we add all the constraints to this objective function multiplied by some positive lambda. So what we get is we have a new objective function, which is L. Previously, we had only F. Now we add all the constraints to our objective function, weighted by lambda, and we get a new objective function. To find the minimum of any function, as you know from basic calculus, what we do is we take the first derivative of L with respect to the variables and we equate that to zero, which will give us the minimum at that point. So this is a basic intuition of solving OPM. 